Hello everyone. After the events of Legion, the defeat of the Burning Legion, with Archimonde and Kill Jaden gone, and the imprisonment of their leader Sargeras, some of the Manari Eredar have decided that they want to join the Draenei again. A little side quest which has been added during Dragonflight, and some more customization for the Draenei. Some of you have asked if I could do a video on this, so let's do it. But before we dive into the quest though, a little bit of history. Once upon a time, and we're talking ancient history here, far before the War of the Ancients, and that war was already over 10,000 years ago, so a really, really long time, there was the Titan Sargeras, fallen to darkness, forming his burning legion. Well, the demons had offered him plenty of firepower, they were in need of brains and leadership as well. A race of Eredar had caught the Dark Titan's attention, a race far more intelligent than any other Sargeras had encountered. They hungered for knowledge above all else. With it, they believed they could shape the universe into a better and more benevolent place, and they were led by three leaders, Archimonde, Kil'jaeden and Velen. When Sargeras made contact with them on their home world of Argus, he disguised himself as a radiant and elegant being playing into their desires, promising knowledge and unimaginable power. But with the use of an ancient artifact called the Atamal Crystal, once gifted to the people by the Holy Naru, Velen meditated on the choice in front of them. Through this enchanted relic, he received a horrific vision of the Eredar's future, if they decided to side with Sargeras. At first, what he saw seemed only to confirm what Sargeras had promised. He saw himself standing with Archimon and Kil'jaeden, Lords, not only of their own noble and proud people, but of countless other worlds, power shimmered around them. Power that Vela knew would be as intoxicating as any liquor he might sip. Shining cities were theirs, along with the inhabitants of those cities, prostrating themselves before the free with cheers and cries of adoration and loyalty. Technology such as Velen had never dreamed of awaited his exploration. Tomes in strange tongues were translated for him, revealing magic, if here for unimagined and untold. It was glorious, and his heart swelled. He turned to look at Kil'jaeden, and his old friend smiled. Archimond put a friendly hand on his shoulder. Then Venna looked down at himself, and he cried out in horror. His body was now a gargantuan, but twisted and distorted. Smooth blue skin was now black and brown and gnarled, like some once noble tree disfigured by disease. Light radiated from him, true, but not the pure light of powerful, positive energy, but a sickly green. Frantically, he turned to behold his friends, his fellow leaders of the Eredar. They too had been transformed. They too retained nothing of what they had been, but they were now Manari. The editor word for something horrifically wrong, something twisted and unnatural and defiled slammed into his mind with the force of a shining sword. He cried out again, and his knees buckled. Velen pushed his gaze away from his tormented body, searching for the peace and prosperity and knowledge that Sargeras had promised him. He beheld only atrocities, where before him had been an adoring crowd. Now he saw only mutilated corpses. Or bodies that, like his, like Kil'jaeden's, like Archimonde's, had been transformed into monsters. Among the dead and the distorted, capered beings that Velen had never before seen. Strange dogs with tentacles sprouting from their backs. Tiny, cheesy figures that danced and capered and laughed at the carnage. Deceptively beautiful creatures, their wings outstretched behind them, who surveyed what had been wrought with delight and pride. Where their cloven hooves fell, the earth died. Not just the grass, but the soil itself. All that gave life was obliterated, sucked dry. This, then, was what Sargeras planned to do to the Eredar. This was the enhancement he had spoken of so glowingly. If Valen's people allied with Sargeras, they would become these monstrous things, these manari. And somehow Valen understood that what he was witnessing was not a single incident. It was not just this one world that was gonna fall. It was not even a dozen or a hundred or a thousand. If he threw a support behind Sargeras, everything would be destroyed. Now, Archimon and Kil'jaeden had not seen what Valen had. Dismissed his warnings and decided to accept Sargeras' offer. In his desperation, it would be the Naru that once again offered him aid. The Naru Quare. <laughs> the Quare? <laughs> The, the Naru Quare promised that they would shepherd him and his closest allies to safety. 
filled with renewed hope, Velen in secret, he looked for more that he could take with him. More that would step away from this dark path that would lead to the corruption of their people, would lead to what they called the Manari. As Sargeras arrived in Argus to corrupt the unsuspecting Eredar, Velen and his followers made a daring escape. Talga is turned against us. No. It cannot end like this. Take the others and go, Prophet. We will buy you time. Hatun! You do not have to do this! Please, keep my family safe. Talgoth was actually one of the editor Valen trusted the most, asked personally to bring Valen's family with him for their escape. Instead, Talgoth turned to kill Jaden, and the rest we now know. On the other hand, there is Hatun, heroically jumping down to hold them off, asking Valen to keep his family safe. Thousands of years later, we would return to Argus during the Expansion Legion. We'd meet up with Hatun again. The years haven't exactly been kind. Their homeworld of Argus has transformed into a fell-infused legion home base, and the Dreni still fighting, they've also transformed into something similar to the Broken. Even though he made the call to stay behind himself, he still blames Velen for a lot, for abandoning them, for leaving them behind, for never coming back. Now, in defense of Velen, the years for the Eredar that came with him, or the Dreni as we now call them, they've not exactly been easy. As they cruised through the great dark beyond, traveling from planet to planet, Kill Jaden, he kept his word and he hunted them down. Each time they were about to be discovered, Denaru would give them a heads up and they'd escape again just in time. For millennia, they were on the run, until Denaru fell ill. They had to make a crash landing on a little planet called Drenor. There, they would be found again, and the local orcs were turned against them, formed into the United Horde, and all the stories of Warcrafts, those would follow. Eventually, having Velen and some of his people blast off again, this time to the planet of Azeroth, where they would join the Alliance, and their journey would eventually see them returning home. Now, just before their escape on Argus, we can see that Velen has the Atamal crystal with him, and it explodes. With his corrupted people charging towards him, those that he once trusted with his life, the Prophet was at his wit's end. Gripping the Atamal crystal and thrashing it up into the sky, as if the heavens themselves were cracking open a pure shaft of radiant white light appeared. Its glory shone directly onto the crystalline prism, and before Valen's stunned gaze splintered the white light into seven distinct rays of various hues. Pain then stung Valen as the crystal he held shattered, the sharp edges slicing his fingers. He gasped and instinctively released the fractured crystal, watching enraptured. As the pieces hovered in the air, each transformed itself into a perfect sphere and taking on the seven radiant hues of the light that had once been a single perfect shaft of pure white radiance. The seven crystals, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet, shot upwards, then sped to form an enclosure of light around the frightened forms of the gathered Eredar, keeping them safe as the Naru kept their promise and showed up with a means to escape. The crystals, where there was once one, there are now seven, Quarry said to Velen. Recover them, for you will need them. Some of these crystals were definitely needed, have definitely played an important part in the story. Well, others, they've kind of disappeared. So we got seven crystals, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The green one has been named Leaf Shadow and was used by the Draenei to hide their city of Telmor within Tedarkar Forest. This had kept them safe for a while, but their kindness was turned against them. Once upon a time, they saved two young orcs, Duratan and the Orgrim. Once grown up and part of the Horde, Duratan used his knowledge to deactivate Leaf Shadow's magic and reveal the city. The city and the people within were then destroyed. And then they used the crystal to hide the Horde forces just before bringing Shefrath low. After that, the crystal vanished from the story, and its current location is unknown. The same goes for the blue crystal, called the Eye of the Storm, Fortune Smile, and the Shield of the Naru, that only leaves three crystals to be discussed. 
The Violet Crystal, that is called Spirit Song, and it has the power to open up your mind and spirits. Velen likened it to having direct contact with the Naru whenever he used it. The Prophet was also the last person to hold it before they set sail to Ansroth. Then it would be found by the Dreadlord Kudulfas, who, with the crystal in hand, thought that it was now above the Burning Legion. Then next is Prince Haramat, leader of the Consortium. He wanted to get his hands on it for Kilfas and the Sun Fury. But he was so inspired by the selflessness of adventurers that had brought him this crystal, that Haramat decided to deliver it to the Naru Adal within Shafraf instead. The red crystal, that's called the Heart of Fury. It has the power to accentuate the individual's aggressiveness and strength. At some point, Velen gets captured by the orcs, by Duratan himself. Now while not executing the prophet, they did take away two of his crystals. One of them, that was this one, the Heart of Fury, and from that point on, it would be passed along the tribes as they led assaults against the Draenei. Eventually, it would end up with the Shadowmoon Fell Orcs at the Atamal Terrace within Shadowmoon Valley. Akama then asked heroes to retrieve it, place it in the Medallion of Karabor. This was brought to the Naru Adal, and then this medallion, it gave us access into the Black Temple when it came time to bring Illidan low. Then the final one, there will be the yellow crystal, and connected to the Manari Eredar rejoining the Draenei. The yellow one is called the Brilliant Star, and it has the power to calm the carrier's emotions, purifying them, allowing them clarity in their decisions. This especially affected casters, allowing a manipulation of the arcane and elemental magics rarely paralleled elsewhere. Like the red one, this one was taken by Duratan, and then it would pass on into the hands of Kil Jaden, who kept it as a trophy. But Kil Jaden is dead now, while the crystal carries on, passing hands from one demonic warlord to the other. That's still an interesting question to be honest, to be honest. What exactly is happening now with the Burning Legion and the demons that were part of it? Now that we defeated their commanders, our commander Kil Jaden, as well as Sargeras. He was the one who formed the Legion to begin with, and before that, he was the greatest enemy. He locked them away within his prison world of Mardum. Now he's out of the picture. So what exactly are demons up to? Well, on Argus, they are still fighting, and we're asked by Velen to join him on a little trip. Nothing dire this time around, he's actually quite hopeful. Scattered visions have come to him as he meditated, yellow and red, shattering glass, a rush of warmth. I see my own hands, but I'm afraid to grasp it. The scent of fell, of Argus. When I awoke, a message had been delivered, Hatun wishes to meet. Last time, our trip to Argus went through a rift that was opened up. But that rift had been closed by now, so I was kind of curious how we're going to get there. Not to worry though, apparently we still have operational transport beacons on the surface of the planets. So a quick teleport later, and we have a little chat with Hatun. He's still not the kindest towards Velen, accusing him of never returning for those that he left behind. Still, he has made an ally that's been desperate to talk to the Prophet. This is the Manari Arzokal, and at first Velen chains him down. A reaction that was expected by Atun. Once the shock passes though, the prophet is willing to listen. Arzokal won't believe the promises of Kil'jaeden and an Archimond. How could he not? And so when they demanded that they pay the Legion's price, he trusted them. They all did. But he never knew that price would be paid in millennia of bloodshed and ashes. If only everyone was granted visions like Velen had been given. Not to mention that Kil Jaden has ways to invade your mind and snuff out any doubt. Doubt was betrayal in his eyes. We all know that he does not take kindly to betrayal. Arzokal feared death more than the price of his sin, but now Kil Jaden is gone, and he's been helping in the fight against the remaining demonic forces on their home. Some of them still grasp for power, some of them have isolated themselves, while others, others have formed cults, waiting for the return of Sargeras. They have faith that one day he will come back to lead them again. The leader of one such cult is called Nauridan, and in his possession is a relic, rumored to have been taken from Kil Jaden, now used to commune with Sargeras himself. This relic is in fact the Brilliant Star, which Arzokal wants to return to its rightful owner. We join him on his mission, as Velen cannot guide him on his path. Together we slay Manri Cultist, overload the Sargeri conduits, Speaker Nauridon falls to our might, and on his body we do indeed find one of the lost shards of the Atomal Crystal. Velen can never thank him enough for this, but Arzokel does not believe he deserves gratitude. There cannot be forgiveness, not in a thousand lifetimes, but if his twisted soul can still do any good, he will see it done. Others have proven themselves stronger than the darkness. The orcs, for example, or death knights, or the Illidari. Perhaps there is a path going forward. 
perhaps there is a place for the Manari amongst the Draenei. He will join them under his old name Arzal. And with that, we've unlocked the customization. We too can make Manari Draenei with a slight little touch that the Gift of the Naru is now infused with the Fell. Some transmog is also up for grabs, and a toy is added to the collection. Velen then asked Hatun to think on his offer. The Broken had not expected Velen to react in this way. He didn't have to after all. Perhaps things are different now. Perhaps they both are. He will allow himself to hope. Which has me wonder if this color customization is just the start. Could it be that the broken Draenei will also rejoin their brothers and sisters? Perhaps as an allied race, perhaps as a customization option as well. I'm really curious to see. But for now, you're up to speed on the history of the Manari and their reconnection with the Draenei. So thank you very much for watching everyone. As always, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, see ya!